a run through of how to set up the Perkin Elmer Envision plate reader. First step, power on the equipment. To do this, you first turn on the computer, which will be at the back. Once the computer is powered on and the Windows program has started, then you turn on the actual plate reader. Once the plate reader is on, you can go ahead and start the Envision program. Give it a minute, you may be doing some filter checks before it starts up. So now this brings you to the programs that you can run. You can do absorbance read, you can do fluorescent read, you can do luminescent read. In some models, you can also do alpha screen reads. These need specific detectors that you would have to add on to the uh, instrument. The Inspire when it's given to you doesn't have it. So say you are doing an absorbance based plate read. What you can do is copy one of the existing protocols that they've given you. So it, to do that, you just highlight it and then you have to go to create protocols. And in create protocols, you can see here that you've got a copy selected. So you can now copy that and you can see it's popped it here as copy. And so now you've got a copy, but you don't, it's not going to be for a Bradford assay probably, it's going to be an absorbance read for any other for some other essay so then what you can do is change the name so if you come into the settings you can actually get this pop-up screen keyboard where you can say protocol well you know call it whatever you want you can use the keyboard or can use the on screen so protocol for abs reads and you can just go okay and now it's named it and you can put instructions here so let's say this one the read is not at 595 but you're doing an absorbance read at 405 nanometers then and it's not a protein concentration but say you're doing some sort of cytokine measurement so let's say yeah just name it as you need cytokine measurement and now it's ready for your specific assay so what we do is we specifically we copy something that is an absorbance based methodology and then we name it for ourselves and of course we want to change the specific absorbance so if we're doing absorbance and we say now we're doing 405 nanometers then here we can change the wavelength that we want to measure at and these are the heights of the plates that you'll be using you can usually leave it on the default unless you're using some specialized plate specific plate and then you need to you can select what the kind of read that you want so you can do a single and it's doing single absorbance but if you want like a well scan then you would need to bring it over so you, to press this, then you can bring it over and you can let it know that it's an absorbance read and it will bring it here now. So you see it's got absorbance and it's got a well scan. But we don't, if you don't want it and we don't want it, you can just uh, get rid of it now. So it's got this measurement C. If we don't want that, we'll get rid of that as well. But yeah, the, if it's not a single measurement, you can pick whatever measurement. Maybe it's a spectrum scan, a on fly, then to accept it, you just press the arrow. And then you can add other components if you want to delay, if you want a temperature, if you want to shake. So say I want it to shake uh, just before it reads, I can bring that here and I can move it up because I want the shake before the read. And then you can specify how long you want it to shake it for, say, I just want the shake to be for, you know, three seconds and then it reads it. Then that's where you set it. So that's what you would do. And so to save this now, sorry, then you've got also your outputs and your outputs here, there's an initial plate measurement that it will put out. But if you also want, like, um, if you have a standard curve for your measurements, that you would have liked. So back here, if you know that certain wells, so in the plate, certain wells, we're going to be saying measurements for your standards. So let's mark these as our standards and normally you do replicates. So this one's doing singlicates, but let's just go ahead and delete it. So we can, instead of singlicates, we can now acknowledge that we want replicate so this is where you can change your replicate and the sample because we deleted it we actually starting back from one it thinks that it's got it here starting from 13 
so here when you click on it it brings the pop-up here so you just change it here and now it's at one and then if I select the wells here we go standard one standard two standard three standard four standard five and so here you can actually go ahead and with the standards enter the concentrations and the way you do that is when you're in these calculations area so if you come to calculations for the standards we need to bring it across that we've got standards and if you hit edit then you can put in the concentration so it was 2000 okay so i'm using the keyboard it's not working so just use the on-screen keyboard so 2000 picograms and let's say you're doing uh, uh one in two dilutions so the next is a thousand you know whatever your uh, standards are in you just go ahead and fill it all in so here you can see I've filled up all the concentrations and then you can just go back to calculations and so now we know we the instrument will be able to calculate the standard curve and then you can also select the kind of curve fitting that you want for your standard curve so here we come back to edit the curve fitting types we had linear regression we have spleen we have 4pl typically i tend to use a 4pl but it is dependent on the type of response you're, you're actually the readout is actually producing so let's say we're going for a 4pl fit then because we've now got a setup where this plate we've got standard curves on it and we've told it what the concentrations are and we've told it what fit it is when we now go to output in addition to the plate we have to tell it that we also want the calculated concentration if you don't do it it's not going to show it so you have to add it here and now you've you've got uh, an output and so you'll be able to look at your file setting csv if you didn't want that file setting then you change it and it shows you the wells and that's now you've now set up it's calling a copy of bradford protein assay but don't forget that we changed the name so now if I go anywhere if I click anywhere it will tell me do you want to save changes and we will say yes and so now we have that protocol that we've just created based on an original one that is customized and fitted for the one that we're actually doing so now let's say we're done we're gonna run the plate then while you select it you press run and you've inserted your plate and it's going to start on the screen here to start reading your plate and so you'll be able to see it's doing the shake and it's now going to start reading the absorbance at 405 nanometers and it's going to give you this is just a test run so you can see it's just giving you all zeros but if you actually have samples in there it would give you the readouts for that plate so when you're running a plate, when you're in the run protocols, um, if you just go to run protocols, it'll start reading, assuming that the plate is in there. But if you haven't placed your plate, you need to come to load plate here. And that's when it will then ex give you the plate uh, holder to be able to actually start the read. So it's not immediately obvious the plate won't come out when you go to run protocol until you hit the load plate and that's when you'll get it so you've read your plate now and you want to access your results the results will pop up automatically you have to wait for that but say um, you are trying to access the previous result then you will go to show results and when you go to show results you want to be able to uh, access that particular result associated so you highlight the protocol that you ran it under and then show results and here you'll be able to export the result in a format that you need and so if I go here to file settings there's a CSV if I say there was a graph that I wanted to export as a graph then you would use the MHT format because that's what the visual uh, representation is if you use a CSV then in Excel you'll be able to see your files so to actually access your file to copy into your particular USB if you're not networked you need to come and press the Windows key once you press the Windows key it will give you these 
additional icons which you weren't able to see before so then I can press my file folder file and here I can go to uh, desktop which is where the the inspire folder is Inspire Manager, Inspire Data. So you go to Inspire Data, and here it creates a folder with the date, so the 25th of the 4th, and you'll be able to open it and access that file. Now copy it, and because you would have placed your USB, you can now put your file in there. Before you go, I've shown you how to create protocols so say you didn't want to create a protocol but and um, there was an exact protocol and you just wanted to edit it then you could also do that so in one protocol so you've got all of this say I want a fluorescent protocol so here I can just go and I'm keeping it I'm not making a copy then you could just press edit and then you can go ahead and in this press edit again to change specific things and once again you can come into the heading the settings to change the name you can go into the measurements to specify what kind of scan you know if you want any shakes or delays or temperatures uh, requirements and change the you know excitation and emission because this one is now fluorescence read or just an absorbance read and by just clicking into any other one it will ask you to save and if you want to save it then you will go ahead and save it so great, so let's go back to now exiting the unit. So to close down, it's a little bit unintuitive. To close down, you actually need to go to settings. Once you finish your run, you go into settings and then it says exit to windows. And so this is where you will be able to go and um, exit the software. You will go to settings, I'll just say no because I don't want to save it. So then we go to exit to Windows and this is how we close the software. So you can do only the Inspire Manager or if you don't need to use any of the functionalities, you can just close whole Perkinelma Expire so software and go OK. And so you just wait for it to shut itself down. And once it's shut itself down, and then you can turn off the actual computer just by pressing the button.